this is Gladiolus iliotii, a fantastically spotted Gladiolus species that grows here on the high felt grasslands. You will also notice there is some color variation between specimens, this one having a more sort of a yellow undertone. this particular specimen, the spots on the flowers uh, seem to enlarge to such a degree that it has a darker appearance. Another beautiful species of gladioli. This is Gladiolus crassifolius with the typical drooping tips of the inflorescence or the flower spike. Flowers are smaller than Eliotii, but uh, definitely the color is more intense. They also grow in rocky, drier sections of the grassland. Here you can see the color up close on the inside, sort of a yellow green and then the purple markings and the pink blushing really is extraordinary. This is Habanaria evipactidea, one of the grassland orchids. 
these sort of remind me of little elephant faces with the ears and the tusks. They definitely seem to prefer a damp spot in the grassland, growing sort of near seepages and uh, flat surfaces where water accumulates during heavy downpours. This is Burkea pinatifida ingrata. I suppose one of the lesser known species of Burkea. Just as thorny as any other Burkea would be. But they have this silvery appearance to them. This is the terrestrial orchid Habenaria epipactidea again. So we'll have another look at them and see if you can spot those elephant faces. A lot of this area burnt down during the past winter and now with the summer rain that has been very consistent a lot of uh, plants are flowering for the first time in quite a few years and this is Ceterium cristatum subspecies longilabiatum.
Yeah, you can see Helichrysum and Urkea still flowering and some Senecios in between. Here you can also see a, another specimen of Gladiolus crassifolius with the paler pink flowers and that typical drooping tip of the inflorescent stem. The Ceterium cristatum, the species Longilabiatum, is uh, really out in full force this year. So let's have a look at some more of these fantastic terrestrial orchids. Here you can see some pristine, untouched landscape. It started to rain a bit, so I had to wait before continuing. But it really is a magnificent landscape. You can see the Pratia sort of dotted and scattered throughout. And the seepages and the rocky outcrops. A fantastic landscape. This is the Lusianskia elongata. So obviously now during the day, buds are closed tightly and then as it cools down, they will open up after sunset to be pollinated by moths. And here you can see, I'm not sure about the name of this bug, but um, it's enjoying its view from the top of a Ceterium uh, flower spike.
here we have yet another bug enjoying its uh, view over the land from the tip of one of these satarium spikes. This is Tritonia nelsonii, a very similar species, Tritonia distica, grows in the Drakensberg and the Eastern Escarpments. And here we have Crassula alba, a beautiful red flower, succulent. And here we have Tritonia nelsonii, we're back to them again. So a typical characteristic to IDVs is on the bottom three tepals, they have little yellow calluses that uh, actually stand up. So we can have a closer look at that. There you can see the three yellow sort of calluses or little fingers that stand up from the bottom three tepals of the flower. So Tritonia distica that grows in the Drakensberg only has a minute little yellow callus on the bottom center tepal. But apart from that, they're very similar. And this is Cyprus rupestris. We'll look at uh, Crassula setulosa, also a late flowering, basically an autumn flowering species. Beautiful white flowers and sort of maroon coloured stems with the green leaves, and they only grow between the rocks in these rocky outcrops. Here we can have another look at the Lysianske elongata as uh, they're quite cute little flowers. So commonly they sometimes refer to as drumstick flowers, hence the tube of the flower and the closed tepals creating that sort of a drumstick look. So they're out in abundance after the fire from this last winter.
and this Pelagonium pluridum, often overlooked because they occur so abundantly and so widespread in the high felt. Yeah, and here we can see Zaluzianskia elongata again, and then behind it there's a Fabaceae plant called Lotanonis erianta. As the flowers mature and age, they turn into orange and then red. And uh, here you can also see the purple flowers of uh, Genostoma Lev. And thanks to good rain and also the post fire that cleared a lot of vegetation and stimulated these terrestrial orchids to flower. You can see here Caricium dracomontanum flowering in the central high felt. So quite far away from, if you think about the name Dracomontanum being the Drakensberg Mountains, to find them in the central high felt is definitely a highlight the edge of their main distribution area. Last but not least is Leonotus microphylla. So the sunbirds here really love to get the nectar from these flowers. And even if you're out walking in the felt or hiking, it's nice to pick one or two of the flowers and just get the nectar that's in there as a sweet treat.